Hello and welcome to this FAQ on closing a business and in this particular one I'm only going to be focusing on closing a micro business. When you're looking at closing anything that's more significant than a few hundred pounds here or there, uh, there are other issues involved, significant issues that need to be cleared properly and uh, fully. So this is a micro business that doesn't really have any assets, it's done very little trading um, and uh, there are a couple of key things that I think we want to be considering. So let's get started. So let's look at the situation. This is, uh, in this particular case, I was asked the question a few times recently where trading hasn't been very good and the business has closed down. Now, this is not uncommon because four out of five businesses will fail within the first five years simply because um, there isn't the market, the pricing is wrong, the structure is wrong, the strategy is wrong, the business model is wrong, tactics are wrong, knowledge is insufficient, support is insufficient, one of a whole plethora of, uh, of things. And it, of course, you know, ultimately, somebody decides to change their views. You know, they go, well, this is not for me. I don't really want to be self-employed, uh, end of story. So for various reasons, you know, businesses start up with the right idea, with the right motivation. That motivation fizzles out. A whole range of things happens or doesn't happen, and uh, the motivation disappears. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be that way, but that's life. You know, if you don't get the right support, if you don't have the right energy into it it's it's not as easy as we're made to we're made to think or led to believe by reading you know the odd success story here you know like microsoft started from a garage or from a shed and apple started from a garage uh, you know all of these things forget to mention how much hard work initiative innovation uh cost resource blood sweat and tears went into creating that success it's it's underplayed uh, because it doesn't sound as good as hey you know we started off from a garage and now we make millions uh, life isn't quite like that for most of us sometimes you've got to work hard think hard uh, work clever and uh, and become a success so anyway it, it hasn't happened uh, let's not get too far into why it's failed so now we get into the situation what are the options of closing down this company and i'm assuming it's got no assets uh, very few liabilities and the first one is to close down the company now when you're closing down the company uh there are a couple of risk areas you need to be aware of the first one of course is that there may be a liability that you haven't considered. So there may be a claim against your business for a supply of service or a product that you've had that it may do damage to someone. There may be a professional indemnity insurance. There may be a personal liability insurer claim. It could be anything depending on their product. And so when you're closing the company, it's really important, really important to make sure you're covered on all of those elements. And one of the most secure ways to do that is to unfortunately liquidate the company through a liquidator. That typically costs between uh, three and five thousand pounds. In most cases, it's unpalatable and um, way too expensive. Uh, you know, you're paying three to five thousand pounds to shut down a company that's done virtually nothing and has virtually nothing. The money has to come from somewhere. It'll come from the director's resources, uh, which saps their wealth. You know, not a great option. But if you haven't traded at all, this is a good option. Because if you haven't traded at all, uh, you could just uh, apply to Company's House to shut it down. There's no one who could have a possible claim on you because you haven't traded at all. You haven't supplied anything. You haven't said anything. Um, you know, no one could have taken advice from you and been damaged by it or bought a product and been damaged by it. Closing the company down is, is quite straightforward. And, uh, you know, there is a small fee for doing that, uh, a few hundred pounds, and uh, the company gets closed down, you know, various things. If you've set up, you know, things like PAYE and VAT, and all, all of that needs to be shut down, and there is a cost for doing that and a time scale for doing that, uh, that all needs to happen. And typically, if you make a decision to close down today, it probably takes around three to six months to, to finally see uh, the company struck off the register. And none of that is because of uh, of what we do. Most of it is what the process is at the authorities. So, company's house has a 
minimum three month process. The inland revenue may object and extend it by six months or even a year. So it's important that you do things in the right order to get this done quickly and easily. And if you do it in the wrong order, it could take two, three, four years uh, because various people aren't told about the process and, and they raise objections. So that's not, not great. So, but closing down the company is probably your best bet. It's a, you know, it's a fixed cost. It's a finite problem. It's dealt with, finished, you know, a year later, if you've done it properly, it's all gone and dusted. You never have to worry about this company again, you know, about filing dates, uh, annual returns, making reports, uh, filling uh, statutory declarations, you know, completing in then revenue inquiries, all of that thing just disappears, gone, finished. Okay. So that's option one. And really option two, and there is only probably the, the, the two options, is let the company become dormant. So basically it is, it's not trading at all. Keep the company open. So leave the limited company open, but at minimum cost, uh, as there'll be no transactions. And I mean no transactions, which means all the costs have got to be handled by the director outside the company and not charged or chargeable to the company. So uh, the company is completely dormant and dormancy means you don't trade, you don't have web costs, you don't have email costs, you don't have accountancy costs within the company. Everything is handled by the directors outside the company. They pay for it directly themselves and uh, end of story, right? So uh, the company just exists as a shell uh, this is this is not a bad option for somebody who's done a little bit of trading, uh, because then the company is still open to be sued and sue uh, for the next six years, which is of the statutes uh, that you're required to cover yourself for. You may want to have professional indemnity insurance or public liability insurance uh, during the six years as a runoff or get runoff cover from your insurance company for any problems that may result as what you've supplied in terms of service advice or product. Uh, and you know, it's usually much cheaper to do this than hire a liquidator at three to six thousand pounds to close down the company if there's been any trading at all. Now remember, if you've done significant amounts of trading, then you really the only safe way is to do a proper liquidation and we can introduce you to a proper liquidator who'll do it properly and protect you as an individual and your personal assets because if you do it wrongly, uh, it's worth nothing because your all your personal assets are up for grabs because you did it wrongly. So it's important to do it right. And if you do it wrong, you know, the claims could be, a hundred pounds, they could be a thousand pounds, they could be a hundred thousand pounds, they could obviously be a million pounds. So please protect yourself, do it right. If the company, so here the company can be dormant, you need to file uh, returns every year, but the returns are very straightforward. There's a, again a small cost for, uh, for filing those returns, but you've got the responsibility, of course, of making sure that you, you know, you, you are, you've got to answer emails and take care of routines. And uh, the accountant may be respond, you know, may take on responsibility for making sure you're aware of it, but ultimately you've still got to answer those emails, you've still got to sign documents, you've still got to pay fees, and the fees you know, over six years may be too much to bear. You may want to go for a liquidation. The responsibility over six years may be too much. You may want to go for a formal liquidation. So these are choices that you have. If you've, if you've traded, traded with a company, not uh, not magic choices. They're not wonderful, great, uh, fantasy, uh, superb, easy choices. Some of them are unpalatable, but uh, that is the the cost of having got into the game as a limited company. Uh, you would have largely the same sort of problem if you added a sole trader or a partnership, because as soon as you trade with with somebody else, you have a responsibility to be covered for professional liability, professional indemnity, personal liability, because they could be damaged by your product or your advice and they would need to have the comeback of being able to sue or sue the, the person who gave them that advice or uh, that product. So those are, those are your two options. Hopefully that'll give you a, a few areas to think about. Uh, of course, if you're a client uh, and when you've had to think about them and you've digested this video maybe once or twice just to really understand it, uh, because what we don't want to do is charge for time to explain things like this if they can be done for free for you. So this video explanation comes free to you as a client. Uh, what uh, we then expect you to do is absorb it for free uh, and then use the time with us in consultation uh, 
by answering the bits of questions that may be specific to you and that may only take five minutes if you've listened and watched this video carefully made some notes or listed some questions based on what we've said and reached a decision okay so let me leave you with that uh you know, i look forward to being of further assistance as and when uh, you need help and uh, our contact details obviously if you're a client you know our contact details and our email addresses for clients specifically if you're not the website is on there if you're not a client and you'd like to become a client and get this quality of thinking to be brought to bear on your business or you're closing your business then by all means um, you know, contact us and we'll see if you know we're in the right place to help you uh, and you're in the right place to receive our help take care of yourselves and uh, Gordon De Silva signing out don't forget 0208 241 3000 or www.gordonsnight.co.uk. Take care. Goodbye.